joining us with SDI TV. Today we're going to be changing out a bladder kit on a 2016 to 17 WP shock. This is a linkage shock on the KTM. And so what we have here is a, a bladder kit that's changing out from the free piston and we've got some benefits with that, what it's going to have. It's a lot easier to service this. It's got a lot better small bump sensitivity, especially coming into the corner or out of a corner. Um, you don't have a free piston stickage in it. It actually allows the shock to move a little quicker through the travel to be able to soak up that small bump sensitivity as well as the, the center surface interval and the oil changes on this now are gonna be a lot easier with this as well. So let's jump into this. So first off, we wanna make sure that our shock is actually firmly set into a, a vise itself. We wanna make sure that we have no nitrogen pressure inside the shock, so we're gonna release the nitrogen pressure out of that. So uh, this is obviously under pressure, so we'll make sure that's all out. Um, and then from that point, we're actually gonna use our acetylene torch to heat up the outside of the stock can. It has got a red Loctite on this, so we wanna keep this uh, warm enough to not be able to touch it, but be able to melt down that uh, red Loctite and be able to unscrew this. What happens, unfortunately, sometimes while you're unscrewing it, the red Loctite will still refirm itself. So you might have to heat it back up once you start to unscrew it. So uh, just keep an eye on that. If it feels tight, just go ahead and reheat it back up while we go through it. We heated up the, can, the stock can and loosened up the red Loctite. We're going to use a strap wrench on this to be able to break the top cap loose. And again, if it starts to feel like it locks back up on you, just go ahead and reheat it back up to be able to pull the can off. With the stock can removed, we want to try to keep the shock straight up as we can. We don't want to be able to create an air bubble or an orifice port on the bottom. We're going to try to purge out some of the oil itself that's sitting in the uh, reservoir right here to be able to clean up the threads. And we're going to have to add some red Loctite back to our uh, bladder kit while we install this as well. We want to make sure that we just take just enough oil out to be able to get to all the threads and clean the threads out nice um, and check and expect all those as well before we go through any more. So now with the threads all cleaned out and dry, we're going to take our SDI bladder kit here. Like I said, make sure on the outside of the threads that we're clean on that and dry on that, we're going to add a little bit of red Loctite on the outside of the can when we install the can. Um, and we're just going to take off the back side of the can and the bladder for now while we install the cylinder. As you look, you can see the threads on the bottom side are a taper difference. You have a standoff. So the, basically the SDI logo at this point is going to look upside down. When we flip the shock ups right side up, you'll be able to read the logo on this. We're just going to add a little red Loctite to this now. And go ahead and screw that in by hand. So now that we have the cylinder on the shock itself, we're going to take our strap wrench and just give it a little snug. Nothing that needs to be crazy with this. We're actually going to tighten this uh, to a torque spec later on in the uh, when we put the top cap on. we have the cylinder all tightened up here, we're going to take some of our premium shock oil that SDI offers. We're going to fill up the can itself. You don't have to worry too much about overfilling it or anything because we're going to set the bladder in and the bladder is actually going to push out the excess on this. With the bladder here now, what I like to use is some of our SDI super slick grease. We're just going to take a little bit of that, run that on the outside of the O-ring itself. Nice little seal, get down inside the, the crevices on that. And when we set that down, we're just going to set it down slowly, try not to create any uh, extra bubbles if we don't need to, and it's just going to purge itself out to the level that it needs. So now with the bladder sat down in the cylinder, we're going to go ahead and take our anodized cap 
This cap's going to just screw right on. So now with the can completely screwed on, we're gonna use a 17 millimeter hex and we're gonna set this at 25 foot pounds. We tighten down our cylinder and our bladder kit down to 25 foot pounds. We're actually going to install the Schrader valve now, so go ahead and take off the metal retaining cap off of that. And we're going to just install the Schrader valve that way. It's got the O ring inside of it as well, so we don't need any grease or any Loctite or anything on that. This is a 10 millimeter bolt on this. And we're just going to tighten this up to be a, a snug, snug tight on this. Now that we have our bladder kit tightened down to 25 foot pounds and our Schrader valve installed, we're actually going to use our uh, SDI no pressure lost gauge here. Um, we're just going to screw this on and we are uh, set up to be able to add nitrogen to the shock. SDI recommends anywhere from 135 to 150 PSI. So now at this point we're going to go ahead and add nitrogen into the system. We're going to overfill it just a little bit because we can bleed back off to what we're looking for. I'm going to run this at 140 PSI for myself. Um, again, this is anywhere from that 135 to 150, depending on your weight and riding style. After we filled up with the nitrogen, we're just going to add back the metal cap. Reassemble our spring and wipe this thing down and take it for a ride. Thanks for joining us here at SDI TV. If you guys have any questions, anything that we can help you out with, always check our website. Instructions available there. Thank you for joining us.